Lord, our hearts are bowing before you, Lord, with adoration, with worship, because you are our God, our creator, the God who so loved us that you sent Jesus, your only son, to come and redeem us from our sins. Thank you, almighty God, for the gift of salvation. We are forever grateful. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord, your presence in us. We are so grateful, Almighty God. We welcome the Holy Spirit even right now. Welcome, Holy Spirit. We celebrate your presence. God, our helper. God, our strengthener. God, our comforter. Lord, I pray for your people here and those who follow the service, Lord, through the live streaming, through different platforms. My God, multimedia platforms. I pray down your blessing over them. I pray down, my Father, your anointing, your fresh anointing. Keep them strong. Galvanize them, Lord. Lord, let them remain fortified by the knowing that you, O oh God, are in control. You are our Father who is always watching over us. Bless us, Almighty oh God, this day through your word and through this gathering, this fellowship. We enjoy your presence, Lord, as we are gathered here to fellowship in worshiping your name. To you be all the glory now and forever. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Take your seats. We're in the presence of the Lord. May I take this time to greet and welcome all of you into the presence of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. And we welcome those who follow us through the, um, the mass media, the electronic platforms in different places. Amen. We thank God that in spite of what is happening, He is still in control. Hallelujah. Shout after me, say, God is still in control. He is still in control. Hallelujah. This is the beginning of the end. This is what? The beginning of the end. But please be careful. It's not yet the end. The end has not come. Hallelujah. Why has it not come? Because of Matthew chapter 24 verse 14 where Jesus says this gospel of the kingdom must be preached, must be preached to all nations, to all peoples of the earth. Then the end shall come. Hallelujah. So we are not yet at the end. Praise the name of the Lord. So don't just throw in the towel and say, I'm just waiting for Jesus now. You will lose golden opportunities. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. We need to keep on pushing. Hallelujah. What we need to do as Christians, um, even in the days that we are in, we must keep strong in our new positions as children of God. Hallelujah. That is very big. That is very strong. It means your position is what must galvanize you, what must propel you forward. People are dying because of the virus, but God is still God. Amen. Say, God is still God. So, I want to give you a quick advice. Just remember Ephesians chapter 6, 10. What does it say? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. It's, it means, yes, we can see. We don't deny the facts on the ground, but we are always aware that we are children of the Most High God, the mighty Jehovah of heaven is our Father. Can you say amen? So, keep your mind anchored on that and understanding that yes there are challenges but greater is the God who's my father can you say amen another amen so be strong in your union in your belonging to the mighty God of heaven and be strong in the power of his might amen keep yourself strong unshakable the Bible says in the book of 1st Corinthians 6 13 remain unshakable steadfast immovable in your faith hallelujah 1st Corinthians 16 13 and then I want to also give you another word of encouragement in the book of Isaiah 41 10 it's very important I mention this because there's a lot of paranoia everywhere people are afraid right or wrong Isaiah 41 10 please Bazano I'm called fear not this is a discipline of every day I must always remind myself because there are many situations and conditions that will manifest that will cause me to be unsettled will cause me to be shaken so I must keep on reminding myself that by the way I'm under a strict instruction that I must do what I must fear not hallelujah say I'm under instruction. 
by Jehovah God Almighty that I must fear not. Why? Because he says he is with me. Don't be overwhelmed because I am your God. You know what it means? It means I'm your backup. You are going through it with me backing you up. Write it down what it means when he says I am your God. It means you are going through whatever you are going through and I'm there as your backup. Hallelujah. 24-7 backup. I never sleep, I never slumber. Hallelujah. Don't be dismayed. To be dismayed is to be, to be in a sense of hopelessness. Hopelessness. You are dismayed. It's to be in a state of giving up. You want to give up. Hallelujah. It, it is to be in a state of throwing in the towel where you say, what's the use? I've been trying ABC, ABC. It's not working. So I'm giving up. God says, don't be dismayed. I'm your God. I will strengthen you. I will fortify you. Yeah. I will keep you strong in spite of all the hardships you are going through. I will keep you what? Very strong. I will strengthen you. Can you imagine Jehovah, God of heaven, strengthening you? Hallelujah. Yes. Oh my God, I like that. Oh, it's so personal. Yes. I will help you. Yes. It's like this is diffusing some doubt, every shade of doubt. Yes, I will help you. Oh, I declare to you, God is going to help you in every situation you may be going through. God is going to see you through. God is going to help you. God is promising us. He's not a man that he should lie. He say, yes, I will help you. Oh, my God, I will hold you with my righteous right hand. Thank you, Jesus. I will hold you. Say, God is holding me. Say, God is holding me because he's the Lord who holds our hands under the shadow of his wings. We are safe. We reverse, we rewind, we go back to Psalm 46. Jesus of Nazareth. It says the Lord is our refuge and our strength. Psalm 46, verse 1. The Lord is what? Is our refuge. God is our refuge. Ah, it means no matter what I may be going through, I am hiding under the shadow of his presence. He's our refuge mm. and our strength. Food is not your strength. Encouragement from people is not your real strength. Your real strength comes from God. A very present help. Have you seen it? Very what? Very present help in times of trouble. Never forget this word. Run with this word. Tell that devil I've got greater help than your attacks. I've got a stronger backup than your attacks. Say thank you, Jesus. So all the technons of worship center out there and all the people of God who are partners of this church and those who follow our ministry, this is your word. God is your very present word. Help. In the day and in the time of what? Of trouble. Praise the name of the Lord. Say thank you, Jesus. Say I give you praise. Say I give you glory. Say I magnify your holy name. Now we're going to read for a scripture, the book of Romans chapter 12. We'll pick up six important nuggets there that we need to use to anchor our souls, our minds, our lives. We we'll read it in the New King James, Romans 12, 11. Not lagging in diligence. That word diligence in the context of that verse, it talks of zeal. It talks of what? Let's read it together. One, two, three, go. One, two, three, go. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. 
not lacking intelligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Write those three things there. Number one, not lacking zeal. Sanze, number one, keep your zeal high so that you are, at least I make it simpler for you. Number two, these are instructions. Be fervent in spirit. I'll tell you how, how you do it. Be fervent in spirit or in your spirit. And number three, keep on serving the Lord your God. Then our request, keep on serving the Lord your God. In these times, in these challenging times, it's like Paul wrote this, this portion of scripture for these days. The times were in. Because remember, the Christians in Rome being a pagan city, Christianity was rejected in those regions. So they were under intense persecution and opposition. So he wrote such things to strengthen them. Number four, write it down. Keep rejoicing in hope. Hey, hey, hey. Keep rejoicing in what? In hope. At the moment, we're reading just simple English. I'm going to unpack these things for your deeper empowerment. Be patient in tribulation. Be patient in tribulation. Tribulation is a very strong word. It's a very strong word, tribulation, because it means intense troubles, intense hardships. You can write there just to make that, 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 that number five more stronger. Intense hardships, intense troubles. Things are just refusing to go your way. But the Bible says remain resilient. Because the patience in tribulation, it means remain resilient, strong. Number six, finally, continuing steadfastly in prayer. So if you got all of them, continuing very strong in prayer, very strong in prayer. Now we'll start from the end to the last. We'll start from number six. Please just get a clear page where you, you write some few nuggets on what it means to be steadfast in prayer. You see, when we are facing many challenges in this world that we live in, it's a world of many challenges. Even Jesus said, you will face many challenges in this world. So I want to unpack quickly, what is prayer? Prayer is simply maintaining a non-stop connection with God. Because people think prayer is just making requests to God. No. Prayer is remaining plugged into God. Plugged. Like your phone, you get worried when it loses network, right or wrong? Am I talking with you this morning? When your phone loses network, you get worried. What's happening? Because your connectivity to the network is key. Because it keeps you connected to, to the rest of the people that you want to get in touch with, right? Wrong. So prayer is maintaining a non-stop connection with God. Number two, prayer is to keep on feeling God. Feeling him not in the sense of goosebumps, but knowing that God is there. Are you in the house? Prayer, when the Bible says be constant in prayer, it says it is consistently communicating and communing with him. Two things, communicating to him and communing with him. Worshipping him, adoring him, telling him, Lord, I still love you. Lord, I still love you. This is communing with God and communicating with him. Communicating with him, it's, it's, it is reporting your cares and concerns to him. Hallelujah. We are allowed. The Bible says, let all your requests be known by who? By God. Say, thank you, Father. Hallelujah. So it is reporting continuously your cares and concerns to him. It is also continuously write it down, receiving instructions from him where God speaks back to you. We are defining prayer. And prayer is also interceding for other people. 
before that point I said it is receiving continuously instructions from God, guidance in other words. Say thank you Father. Say I bless your holy name. So we must receive continuously guidance from God. So it says we need to be steadfast in prayer. The word steadfast there it means I must never lose sight of remaining in contact with God. And I'm steadfast. It means nothing uh, sways me. Nothing takes me off course. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And then we're coming backwards. The Bible talked about being patient in tribulation. You know to be patient is that I'm going through trouble. But I'm enduring the trouble. Because I know that this trouble that I'm facing will pass. Hallelujah. So I remain patient though I'm in trouble. Like now, the countries and the nations of the world are in trouble. But God is giving us an instruction. We need to remain what? patient while we are going through what? The trouble. Praise the name of the Lord. This virus will pass. It will what? It will pass. It will pass. It's not yet the end of the world, so it has to pass. It has not come to wipe out the people of this world. It's amazing. In 1918, there was a swine flu. It killed 29, 25 million people. And it passed. 25 million people perished in 1918. It started in Italy. Or in Spain. How many people died? Didn't it pass? Say, this one will pass. So you need to be patient in the great troubles you may be going through in your personal level, in your family situation, or even as a nation. We need to be patient. Hallelujah. And then we come to the one I love the most. It says, you must be joyful in hope. This one I need to explain. Joyful in hope. This is a deep spiritual science. Joyful in hope. Joyful in hope. Now, for us to really appreciate it, let's understand what is hope. Are you ready to write? Are you ready to write? Hope is to confidently expect temporal troubles to pass and good to happen. Hope is to confidently expect current troubles and hardships to pass and good to begin to happen. Because if you don't have this definition, then this, this line of reasoning will not make good sense to you. You will not benefit from it. Write another definition. Hope is steadfastly or earnestly expecting good to happen while we are in the midst of serious trouble. It's called hope. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hope is to earnestly expect good while we are in the midst of serious trouble. It's a strategy that is given to Christians. That's how we sail through troubles. Yeah. Because the Bible never promises me and you that will not go through trouble. Like, I mean, the, this corona is troubling everyone, right or wrong? But in a way, a word, we are joyful in hope because we know I'm going through it, but this very situation will pass. It will be replaced by something better than what is happening. Can you say amen? Now, when you go to Romans, hope is being referred to there. In the case scenario of Abraham, the Bible says against all hope. It means when there was no reason to have hope, the man kept his hope alive. You see, write the statement down. Miracles cease when people give up. The moment you give up, you allow giving up to settle in, your dreams die. Paul 
possibilities of breakthroughs cease when people embrace hopelessness. When the Bible says we who are Christians shall overcome by our faith, faith encompasses all these things that I'm mentioning to you. These things are, I'm mentioning to you are ingredients of faith. It says where there was no hope, Abraham, my God, he held on to hope. So that he may become the father of nations that God promised. Listen, God has given us amazing promises, but we will never become them. If we discard, we throw away hope. Many people are blaming God. It is them, they are breaking the rules. The man was as old as 100 years, and Sarah's womb was as good as dead. But the man never allowed his faith to become weak. We need to be strong soldiers. Say, I'm a soldier. No matter what you are going through, problem must know that whenever they come to you, they are coming to a strong person. Because you have trained yourself by the word of God to become strong. You will not survive in this world if you are a crybaby Christian. Christian, are you understanding me? Say, crybaby cry Christians won't survive. Say, I'm a survivor. I'm strong. So please, let me give you this nugget. So what is to be joyful in hope? Let me explain. Write it down. It means I'm in deep, you see, literally, factually, I'm in very serious troubles. I'm going through very painful hardships. Or oh, I've suffered a very great loss. Or oh, I've lost my job as we speak. I'm at home jobless. Or oh, my business has failed. Or oh, I've failed at school. I've disappointed my parents. I've messed up in life. The Bible says when you are a Christian, or oh, I've gone through a very painful breaking of a relationship with a loved one, divorce. It says you can, by spiritual science, be still in joy. Ha, pastor, hey pastor, hey ngaku, we are in joy and you can still be joyful. It means joyful means full of joy. While you are in these painful situations. How? Because though you are in this painful situation, you have joy. The Bible calls it the joy of the Lord. The joy of knowing that God will never fail. So how do you have joy when you are going through pain? The joy comes from knowing that these pains will pass. Did you hear what I've said? It comes from knowing that what? These pains will what? Will pass. Praise the name of the Lord. And then we do the remaining three. Saving the Lord. Write it down. What is saving the Lord? Saving the Lord is not difficult. It is keeping on doing things that bring benefit to God. Serving God is simply keeping on doing things that bring benefit to God. It means, as the Bible says, serving the Lord. It means I'm always busy doing one or two things. Gesture after gesture. Act after act, but all these things, they are some total, they bring benefit to who? To God. Tithing is bringing benefit to God. Giving offerings to support the work of God is giving benefit to God. Telling others about Jesus is bringing benefit to God. It's serving God. Because when you tell someone about Jesus, you're advancing the interests of God. Praying for the salvation of sinners is serving God. I'm giving these things to you quick as snippets. Are you blessed? 
so that you, because you know, people will, if, if we are not careful, Pastor, people will be in lockdown. Yeah. It means they are doing nothing. All the things I mentioned, they are not doing them. What's happening? We're in lockdown. Be careful. The devil must not lock down your productivity. You can be in lockdown, but you must still be what? Productive and fruitful. Don't forget the original instruction. Be fruitful. Multiply. Hallelujah. So you are in lockdown, but you've got times where you just worship. There's times where you pray in, in the spirit. Hallelujah. So to, to keep your spirit on fire also, after praying in tongues, also do what? Worship. Because the Bible says in, in the book of Ephesians 5, 18, it tells us, it says, be filled with the spirit. It means let the fire be aglow, be burning. And then it says, you do this by singing, making melody unto the Lord, singing psalms in your heart. Praise the name of the Lord. And then we conclude by tackling the last one. What is zeal? Say, thank you, Jesus. Let's quickly define zeal. Zeal is great energy or enthusiasm in pursuit of a particular cause. Zeal Zeal is what? It is great energy, enthusiasm. So we can define zeal as great energy, not energy as it's like a physical power. No, the energy spoken of there is passion. Passion. When people go through problems, when people have been greatly disappointed, when Christians are facing repeated delays and problems, when people experience repeated failures, they lose passion. What is passion? Passion is the fuel for pursuing your dreams. Passion is the fuel for pursuing your dreams. It doesn't matter how many times you may fall and fail as long as you are still maintaining your zeal, your passion, you'll ultimately break through. So during these very trying moments, you'll discover that maybe you have already experienced many disappointments, many failures, many setbacks, many letdowns, or hardships are mounting again and again. And then you lose your zeal, the reason to pursue your dreams. The Bible says never be lacking in zeal. Keep your passion, keep your zeal high. Hallelujah. Keep on pursuing your dreams. Are you hearing me now? Now I'm direct to you. Don't let anything stop you from pursuing your dreams. Even before the corona situation came, maybe you're planning to build a better home. Keep on planning. Keep that dream alive and in focus. You are planning to start your own business. You say, what's the use? The economies are crumbling. There's companies are closing everywhere. Companies are retrenching people. And then you are, you are letting your zeal to die. Don't do it. Pursue that higher degree. Pursue. Maybe some are students. You are saying, what's the use? You are sitting at home. This was my last year in college. Last year in university. I was just about to write my metric exam. This year I was finishing. And bah, this thing is happening. My God. And you are giving up. Don't lose your passion. Keep your dreams high. Hallelujah. Write this statement down. Never stop aiming high. As we are in lockdown, it's an opportunity for strategizing. Did you hear what I've just said? It's an opportunity for what? For strategizing, for reflecting, for ascertaining. Where is my life now? What can I do to make it better? Because listen, your mission is to make yourself better tomorrow than today. That's your mission. Did you hear the mission? Your mission, your assignment is to make yourself work towards making yourself better than who you are now. Because your project, the product that you are busy working on is a better you. I'm talking alone here. The project is what? Is a better you in all aspects. Hallelujah. 
Don't let the troubles that the world is going through kill, quench your passion. Keep on dreaming. Hallelujah. Keep on envisioning. Keep on strategizing. And I declare, keep on working towards improving yourself, developing yourself. Whatsoever God has laid in your heart, if he has given you a vision, a dream of a business, keep on pursuing that dream. If God has given you a dream, a vision of being a minister of the gospel, doing work of ministry, keep, keep that dream alive. If God has given you a vision, a dream of starting your own orphanage, you know, helping the poor and the suffering, keep that dream alive. Whatsoever God has laid in your heart, don't be lacking in that zeal, in that passion. We don't throw in the towel in this kingdom. We don't stop pursuing in this kingdom. Say, thank you, Jesus. Say, I will not stop pursuing. I will keep on pursuing my dreams in the name of Jesus. Say, I will keep on pursuing my dreams in the name of the Lord. And I declare to you, you have all it takes to make it. Are you understanding me? Never give up. Never stop pursuing the dream of becoming a great achiever in your lifetime. Write this last one. Never stop pursuing your dream of becoming a great achiever in your lifetime. Hallelujah. Say, I shall be an achiever. Say, I have the anointing. I have the backup of Jehovah. I have the zeal, the passion of becoming a great achiever in my lifetime. Rise to your feet. Thank you, Jesus. I hear